Hey guys, welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. I've got another product review for you today. This is the ACVCY Survival Kit 14 in 1 Emergency Survival Kit Professional Emergency Camping Gear Tactical Survival Kit for camping, hiking, hunting with wire saw, emergency blanket, etc. Cheat sheet. Yes, that's right. This is a survival kit. Comes in a cool little pouch. And again, I did get this one for free, so I'm biased on the price point. But that might be just about it, as I didn't have any preconceived notions for this kit. So why don't we just dive right in and see what's inside? This survival kit currently lists on Amazon for $26.99, which means that it's relatively inexpensive. So I guess if I came into this with any assumption at all, it would be I would expect to find things of a lesser quality. And we're gonna find out here pretty soon. There's two parts to this video. The first part is we're gonna look inside. The second part is I'm gonna try and start a fire with what we find inside of here, and that's gonna be a real challenge. So stick around for that. Now, if you're like me, I grew up as a Boy Scout, and then I was even a Scout Master for a short little while. I have seen my fair share of cheap Walmart survival kits and whatnot. And so that is what I expected when I got this. And we're gonna find out if that is true. First of all, we're gonna start off with this pouch. This is a Molly style pouch, military style. Uh, it's got this webbing and you can attach it to other compatible things. That's pretty cool, especially if you have a backpack or a vehicle that has this webbing in it, you can attach your bag. The only thing I will say is if this is anything like my Smittybilt seat covers for my Jeep, keep it out of the sun because these straps do deteriorate in the sun, but we'll see. Okay, jumping right in, there's supposed to be 14 things in here, so we're going to try and count on the screen somewhere because I will definitely lose track in my head, but the first one, wow, that's a flashlight. It's a little tiny palm size flashlight. It's what I like to call aggressively tactical, meaning it looks aggressive and tactical. But what I really, really like about this one, it's LED, so that's good. And two, whoa, it's got a lens on it and you can focus that lens, which I think is just so nifty. So that's good. Bright, dim, flashy. Next, this is a uh, flint and this is steel, but this steel comes with what looks to be a bottle opener on one side, although it's kind of hex shaped. Maybe you can use it to turn a bolt in an emergency. I don't know. And a little ruler here. This side of the ruler is centimeters and it says centimeters. This side of the ruler says kilometers, five kilometers. And over here it says one one hundred thousand scale kilometers. This high tech device here is called a map. It's a paper version of Google Maps. And this one one hundred thousand scale ruler is for reading the map. If you come up real close on the map, it has a scale, one of which is in kilometers. And that will line up on this little ruler between the small tick marks is the same size as five kilometers on this map. And so you can use that scale to figure out distances. Well, that was fun. Moving on. We have a spoon, fork, spork, spoon fork. Check this out. It's metal. It's painted. It's got a little fork end here. It's got a spoon end here and it's got a handle. And of course, every good survival kit's got multiple whistles. <whistles> Woohoo! But much to my surprise, this is not where it ends. There is a knife in here and it's actually fairly sharp plus another bottle opener because you may be lost but you can't be sober i mean dehydrated no no that, that would happen bottle opener nice little sheath dealio back to the spoon this might be my favorite thing in the kit so far we've got a stylish paracord bracelet with a little compass in it this which we're getting back to in just a second here a whistle because of course and then this clip here has a center post which is actually a flint wow and this is the steel to the flint so you can go in and do this kind of oh maybe oh 
Come on. Yeah, there we go. Fireworks. All right, and on another note, the compass says that north is that way. And if I turn... Oh, okay. Good. Oh, no, now north is that way. Oh, north is that way. Nope. No, it's... Okay, no, it, it's still... All right, I'm not going to say the compass works super well, but I've never really had a compass of this size that really worked, honestly. Also, fun fact about these paracord bracelets, they're not just stylish. I know they kind of exploded in recent years. They're actually very, very useful. There is a buttload of paracord in here, and in an emergency, you're supposed to untie it and use the cord, not just show off to the bears how cool and stylish you are. See? Woohoo! Next, we have an aggressively tactical pen! Woo! Look at that. It's a pen on one side, and it breaks glass on the other, because... It does. A carabiner, but not just any carabiner. This is a locking carabiner for safety purposes. Unless, of course, you're climbing, then it's completely unsafe for doing so. Don't, don't climb with these. They say don't, don't climb. But it locks. How cool is that? Carrying case. Little belt loop hole. What could it be but a knife? Hey, this is got some weight to it. It appears to be uh, either painted or powder coated aluminum construction. The ability to break glass, of course, and cut seat belts for those times you want to be less safe or get out of a vehicle you're trapped in. Anyway, but this just so happens to be my favorite style knife, which has got the little button assist and it's got the center lock. So that's pretty convenient. Also, it's a serrated knife for more versatility, and you've got a blade, which is incredibly dull, but that's that's fixable. Next up, we've got this. It's a clip with a thing and a thing. Hey, this is actually a water bottle holder, so this probably is for going on your belt or on your backpack, and this goes around the neck of a water bottle, which I don't have one in the garage, but I have some dish soap. Ooh. Ah. Now I can be clean wherever. Yeah. Up next, we've got a tube. It's gonna come in handy later when we're trying to start a fire. This is a telescopic blow tube. So, fire's down here, your mouth is up here without sticking your head in the fireplace, you can feed them coals some oxygen so you can get some good sustaining flames. And you got a good pointer stick. Up next is a nice little wallet multi-tool. You've got a ruler up on the top here. This goes around your compass, I believe, and it can help you determine direction if the compass worked. These guys here, they fit on a series of different, very small bolts, and you can turn them with this. That's what you do to your friends as a, as a mean joke. You give them this to fix their thing with. That would kind of suck. But in an emergency, it'd be pretty great. This guy here is another bottle opener. Yeah. And then a saw and another blade here. I think this is a can opener on this side. I'm not sure what this slot is. And this is for a keychain. Woo. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of tools in this one piece. Although... A lot of them are like the, the last, it, it'd be last resort to use this, but you have it, which is great. Oh, wait. Number seven is a butterfly wrench. That's what this is. This is a butterfly wrench. I don't necessarily know what that is, so we're gonna have to look that up. As promised, and something I'm very excited to use, the wire saw. Wire saw. Yeah, cool. And then the emergency blanket, or as I call them, the space blankets. These are really, really useful. I, I highly recommend having one of these uh, just in, in, in general. And so that's good that that's in here. A really tiny fishing hook. 
a really tiny fishing lure, and an incredibly short amount of string. Wow, that's that's for emergencies, for sure. But you have it. And it takes up no space, so why not? And then lastly, a very small amount of rope. Probably for fastening some of the other tools to like your backpack or whatever. I don't know. And that's everything. That is all of the stuff. The bag is empty, has a little organizing pouch, and that's it. It's the whole thing. Let's start a fire. All right, you guys, it's time for the challenge part of this video. We're gonna take this fire pit and we're gonna fill it with fire using only the tools in the survival kit. We'll see how it goes. First thing we're gonna need is something incredibly flammable, but also natural. So I've got kind of a junk pile behind my garage right now. And it's got this stuff that's been sitting on the ground for quite some time. Now it did rain recently, so some of it's gonna be wet. But we're gonna try and grab a lot of this light Decaying leaves, um, sticks, and things. Okay. Got a nice little pocket. Okay. Maybe a few leaves. Got a little bit of a canopy of leaves here. Maybe they'll help with mitigating wind a little bit yeah we're gonna start off with this super desperate survival situation which is just the bracelet so you're really lost because you were trying to follow this compass and now you're cold so you're gonna have to start a fire and you use your bracelet to do so so i don't know here Something I really like about this is the the striker has teeth on it, so it's gonna have a little bit more surface area and able to get a lot more sparks out of there, which is pretty cool. Not that it's working quite yet, but that's I've never been able to do this, so this, this might take a minute. I'm honestly really impressed with the performance of this flint and steel, but I am starting to wear it out. So I'm gonna try for the larger one and the knife. Technically, this is the striker, uh, and it does have some teeth here, but I feel like I'm going to be more efficient using the knife. Oh, come on, that was so close. I had a good sized flame there. So close. So I'm putting shavings of this into there, and then once I spark it, they all ignite, which is pretty great. But it's just not enough. Oh, come on, that was the best attempt yet. It's a new plan. I got more material, built a little bit of a nest, and so yeah, I'm gonna shave a buttload of these in there, and then try to light it.
I'm not going to say this is going to work, but I'm hoping it will. Now I did start this off a little bit wrong where I just tried to overload it with sparks and that, that just wasn't going to happen, especially with this being a little bit damp. And some of my Boy Scout days are coming back to me and now remember we're supposed to get some of that stuff in there first. But we're going to go back to the survival bracelet to try and ignite this because that's kind of where we started. Come on! Oh no! Ah, it started, but it didn't go. Man, we were so close there. Now, if you're out camping with your vehicle, like I would be in this scenario, you might have some extra gasoline. Gasoline likes to ignite, so uh, sometimes it works pretty well as a fire starter. Maybe we try to a little bit in there. Oh my. <laughs> or a lot. Maybe this will be more likely to ignite. Woo! That worked. I need to get out of the fire pit. Now we just need some larger sticks for the fire. So we're going to use this tool here, the wire saw. And we're going to cut a stick off of this branch. I don't want to throw that whole thing in there. So I'm going to secure the branch. Put the saw around it. Okay. Go back and forth. Ah. Oh boy. It says to keep perpendicular with it. And it's not kidding. There you go. really well. I wouldn't want to cut down a whole tree with it, but by goodness, that doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna die in the woods. So there you have it. Today's challenge was, can we start a fire with this little survival kit? And the answer I believe to be yes. Of course, I cheated a little bit with the gasoline, but the flint and steel striker turned out to be magnesium, which is awesome because you can put the little shavings in there and those, they just really like to ignite. I believe thoroughly that if I had drier materials and spent a little bit more time and diligence getting those in there, that I could have started a fire with this kit alone. However, oftentimes this isn't the only thing you bring with you, so you might have something more flammable like drier lint or in my case, gasoline. So let's talk about the pros and cons to this kit. The first pro being the price. 27 ish dollars is not that much money for a little survival kit and it's a decent size and you get quite a lot out of it. My goodness, I was impressed with just how versatile the items are. One namely being the bracelet, which kind of blew me away with the flint and steel built right into it. This thing is an all-in-one. It'll get you lost with the compass, it'll get you found with the whistle, and it'll keep you warm while help is on the way. Plus, you've got rope. This item alone is worth decent money and it's just one of many things in this kit. The cons would have to definitely be the compass is gonna get you lost. However, I've never seen a compass this size that worked very well, so there's that. Another pro would definitely be the Molly compatibility. If you have a tactical backpack or whatever, this thing just goes right on and is very easy to install. And then of course, just the sheer number of things I mentioned a second ago, there's so much in here for your money. So, what I need to say is this is a definite 
buy. I would definitely buy this kit if you're looking for a tactical little kit. I'd keep it in your car or whatever, your backpack or anywhere where you're going to go into the wilderness. This kit really doesn't suck. I mean, I beat the tar out of the knife trying to strike it over and over again, and it seem to hold up okay so that's pretty good with that being said if you want to buy this kit there's a link down below uh it's a link to amazon if you follow it it gives me some credit so i highly appreciate if you use that link down below and in the meantime you can always like share subscribe and i will see you in the next video